hey, uh, I want to talk to you about that ice puck down the ramp and um, see what we can make of all of that. Uh, I did actually stole one of uh, one of my students' data and just copied it in here. Um, but uh, you have some data yourself, very similar to this. Typed it all in, I got my axes labeled properly, position versus time. And I wanna go through that process that they uh, took you through and um, talk about what it all means. So um, before I do it, anything else at all, I wanna show you here uh, that you can apply curve fit. And uh, you can see our first option here, this linear fit looks pretty terrible. There it is, my linear fit. Looks great. No, not at all. Um, if you ever took statistics or you're taking it now, one of the things that can help you figure out if your fit is a good one or not is um, the distribution of points around your line. So if you think that this is a good fit, uh, you can convince yourself that it's not because there's a very, very clear pattern of when the points are falling on either above or below, or below the line. So we have above, above, and then a whole bunch of belows, and then above, above. That makes a very clear pattern. Um, if it's a good fit, then they should be scattered. There should be no regularity to that pattern. So uh, that's a bunch of garbage. Get rid of that. Um, so let's try something else. What else we got? Apply a curve fit. Um, how about, well, let's say you really don't know. Uh, I think you got a pretty good idea in that uh, pivot interactivity activity that linear, especially proportional, but proportional or linear, quadratic, inverse, inverse square, and I guess they don't have square root here. So um, those are the big ones that we're going to see come up over and over again. Um, not by design. Um, that's just the, those are the kinds of relationships that show up in the physical world. So uh, those are the ones that we're going to be interested in checking. Um, so let's say we didn't really know that and we wanted to do this power fit. So I'm going to do that and apply. Now, the way that this fit works, you can see what the model is here. It's going to pick a number A times whatever you have on your horizontal axis to the B power. So the thing we would be interested in looking at if we were going to do this, we'd like to check out what the B is. In other words, if the computer is just going to crunch numbers, blindly crunch numbers, no thinking involved, what's the exponent it's going to come up with? And you can see that right here, it's 2.027. Well, I'll tell you what, there's nothing in the natural world that follows a mathematical model where that something gets raised to the 2.027 power. So this is where we come in and we're like, oh, that should be two, right? Why isn't it exactly two? Because uh, this is real data and real data is a little bit messy. Um, okay, so now that we know that, we're like, okay, second power, I really should be doing a quadratic fit. And then it does a quadratic fit like this. Um, now it does have a B and a C here. So it's giving us this full Y equals A X squared plus B X plus C. But just like we linearized things before, really we might expect that this should be a parabola that has its vertex at the origin. In other words, it should not have a B and C. So it should be zero. And we don't have, there isn't like a, the equivalent of a proportional fit um, here. Uh, in Logger Pro, there's a little bit more flexibility. There's a way of doing that. And I'll show you that sometime in case you're a Logger Pro user. So um, this is where the linearizing comes in. So that's all fine and good. And in fact, I think I want to copy this equation down. So uh, let's see if I move this over to here. I've got a little Google Doc going. Um, and I could maybe I'll go ahead and do a screen snip of this. This is super boring for you to watch this part. I don't think I'm going to take too long, but uh, you can always fast forward me a little bit. 
probably already got me on hyperspeed, right? Is that like a chipmunk or something? Um, so there's my graph. And then below my graph, I'm going to go ahead and put what the equation would be here. So uh, let's see. I don't want y's and x's, and I need to have the units, right units and the numbers. So I might have to think a little bit. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, I want to blow up this font. So I have a nice big equation. And go ahead and put in. So this is y, but y is right position. So um, that's position. Abbreviate it like that for now. If you think of this thing as moving back and forth on an x-axis, it's very appropriate here to call position x. Notice that's the thing that's on the vertical axis there. So uh, you could do that. In fact, you need to get used to use that. If you did position there, that's fine. You don't actually have to make this rule off. I'm just doing this so we can uh, go through the process. Okay, so uh, let's see. I've got an x squared here, and I've got this number. That's the coefficient. So I'm going to round that to two sig figs. Uh, so I'll say 180. And um, I'm going to make it in fraction form because it's, it's going to need units here. So what would the units have to be? Well, let's see. The thing that I'm getting over here, x, is a position. So it needs to have units of, uh, oops, did I put meters here? Dang it. I think that's actually supposed to be centimeters. I'm sorry about that. When I put the units in, uh, I'm not going to go back and fix that, but this should be centimeters, right? Here, not meters. Um, so that should be 180 uh, centimeters on top because when I multiply this, I need to get it to be equal to centimeters. It has to be dimensionally correct. I can't do stuff over here and get stuff that's not equal to centimeters. Now I have centimeters on the top, but I'm going to be multiplying by this x squared, but it's not really x, it's what this is. I'm going to be multiplying by a time squared. Now, if you square time, then you get to square the units also. So the units for time squared are going to be seconds squared on the bottom here. And I don't want any part of that with this x thing here. So on the bottom of this fraction, I need to have seconds squared, because if I don't, then when I multiply by time squared, seconds will cancel out. Now this is correct because seconds squared, when I plug a time in, will cancel out with seconds squared on the bottom and I will get centimeters. So that's what the units have to be. It cannot be anything else. Uh, let's see, am I still on my equation here? I'm not. Uh, let's see, and then that's going to be plus, oh, I'm still in there, good. So plus uh, B, it's actually minus, not the minus, call that 3.8. Now, what would the units be for this? I should have made my fraction again. Delete that, go back and put a fraction in there. So I'm going to have the same issue here 3.8 centimeters. That's the units that I need. Now, this is going to get multiplied by a time, just x to the first power. So I need seconds down there, so that will cancel out and it will be dimensionally consistent times time. And then I have plus this point. To eight and units of that would have to be centimeters because when I add these three things together, they have to all be centimeters. You cannot add things together unless they have the same units. Addition and subtraction, you got to have the same units. What's three elephants plus two bananas? You can't do that. Uh, you could say it's like five things, but you have to invent a new unit to subsume those two. So we don't do that. We need the units to be correct. So uh, now this is dimensionally correct because I got the times, the second squares are going to cancel, the seconds are going to cancel, and I will be adding up all these centimeters. Um, okay, so that's what the computer said it was when I asked for quadratic fit. That's great. 
Now I'm going to go back to the old Logo Pro. I'm sorry, graphical analysis is what I was using. And uh, I'm going to do what you guys went through in the um, pivot interactivity. I would like to add a calculated column. My calculated column is going to be time squared. And the units, well, if time was in seconds, then this would be in seconds squared. Uh, three decimal places, that's fine. Uh, scientific notation, we could or not, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then insert expression here. Um, so what I would like to do is square my, all right, here we go. So I want to take my times. I don't want to multiply them by any coefficient. I just want to take the times and square them. Right. Of course, you can do that just by hand and make a new column uh, manually, but uh, all the stuff's right there. So I'm going to do it that way. And now that I have that, Logger Pro and Graphical Analysis work the same way in that you can click on this right here, and all the different choices you have for your columns appear right here. It's a really easy way to switch the axes if you get them backwards, too. Uh, so. There's my time squared. And that, my friends, looks pretty linear. So um, why did that work exactly? What are we doing? Well, uh, I think the interact, the pivot took you through this pretty well. But um, just super fast here. What's happening is if you have a graph, y equals a x squared. Um, that's going to look like that, right? But um, that's because y is on this axis and x is on this axis. But what if instead you put x squared on this axis? In other words, if you all the x values you were ever going to be interested in, you squared them all. Well, then if you graph the very same thing, you're graphing y versus x squared, and I mean, that's just like a straight line, right? Because this is like y something equals a constant times something. That's like y equals mx. Of course, these are x squared values, but that is going to straighten that out. So these are two graphs. The thing that a lot of students have a little bit of trouble intuitively with is that these two graphs are of the same thing. They're both graphs of y equals x squared. The difference is what you're choosing to put on this axis, right? It's like you're taking this graph and by squaring the x values, you're stretching this axis out, it pulls the graph down and uh, straightens it out. So here's the linearized version of this. And now I can go ahead and apply curve fit. Now the first option is linear, if I apply that, it's going to give me this, and I get a little bit of a B. I get a little bit of an intercept. Now, remember that you can, if you're pretty convinced that this needs to go through zero, you can apply curve fit and do this very first option, a proportional fit. That will make it this kind of thing with no intercept here. And I would like to do that. And now I would like to... Oh, I better change the title of this. This is not position versus time anymore. It's position versus time squared. And the bottom, I don't know why that would not just go from zero. So let's change that. That looks good. Uh, I'm going to do a screen snip of that. Okay, go back to my Google Doc. And if I'll go down here, 
back to the new page. So this is the linearized version. The graph. And what is the equation for this? Um, it just says y equals ax here because that's a proportional fit. But um, when I go ahead and put my equation in, you need to be very mindful of what I'm typing in here. So this is not y, this is position, which we call x, like it's moving back and forth on a number line, equals, and then I've got this number here, well, I'll call that 174, well, I guess I'll call that 170. I'm going to do two digits. I'm going to put it in a fraction because I'm anticipating I'm going to have units, 170. Now, what would the units be? Okay, so I still need to get position over here, right? So whatever happens here, the units need to come out to be centimeters. So uh, I'm going to have to have centimeters on the top there. And then what am I multiplying by here? It's not really an x. It's really uh, time squared. Time squared is the thing that is on the x-axis. So time squared. Um, I just left the bottom of that blank for a second so I could kind of gather my thoughts and figure out what's going on. So um, let's see, what would have to be here? Well, I still need to get centimeters here. So on the bottom here, I'm gonna have to, again, have seconds squared so that this equation will be dimensionally consistent. All right, so look at this one. this one, and you can see that we got pretty much the same thing. I got 180 here when I did this, and I got 170 here. Of course, it's really 174 and 178. That's slightly different things because we use different mathematical modeling tools. There are different uh, models, but that's all good. And um, that is all I'm going to say about that, except that for the purposes of analysis, remember that um, you, you either have at this point watched the kinematics notes or you're about to watch the kinematics. I think you're about to watch the kinematics notes. So I just want to suggest here that um, this is position as a function of time. What if we do the derivative of this equation? What would that mean? Well, what is the derivative of position? That's the rate that position is changing over time. The derivative of position is velocity. Oops, I'm going to do an equation mode here. All right, and then uh, here, we got t squared, so I know how to do the power rule, so that's two multiplies here, so that would be, I'm gonna put my fraction in here, so two times 170 is 340 centimeters. When I take the derivative, the units of a constant, this is just a number with these units, those units are not gonna change. And then times time, whoops, because the power rule, the exponent goes down by one. Right. And um, I want to point out that if we have a situation where we have constant acceleration, then velocity versus time should be a straight line because by definition, what is acceleration? Acceleration is the rate that your velocity is changing. Hey, is your velocity staying the same all the time, like constant velocity? Then your acceleration is zero. Um, is your velocity changing? Then you have non-zero acceleration. 
Is it changing at a constant rate? We can start from zero and then accelerate uniformly where your acceleration is changing your velocity in a nice linear fashion. Then we say that you have constant acceleration, slope. The slope of your velocity versus time graph, that's the rate that your velocity is changing. At. That is what acceleration is. And right here, we just found this. If we were going to say, if this was a lab report, I'm going to say, what's the general model here? I could say, oh, this is like velocity. It, oops, that's an A. Uh, whoa, sorry. We could say velocity is equal to acceleration. And just in case, this is a specific case where your velocity started at zero. What if it didn't start at zero? Well, if you have constant acceleration, it would still have to be a straight line, um, but just maybe it doesn't start at zero. Maybe you started at some like, initial velocity like that, and then you, your velocity changed uniformly from there. So, Let's see how to do subscripts here. That. So there, that's a general model for this. Of course, in this case, my VI was zero. I went right through the origin. Um, so that's enough of that. That's a little bit of analysis of uh, what you did, or my version of what you did in the pivot interactivity. Um, and uh, there you go. So I'm going to stop recording now.